Good evening, Church. I guess it's been a unique experience altogether. Uh, I should not say unique, and uh, because we had been into evening worship services, and uh, again, it's a different experience now. I feel it's good having different uh, kind of things, and let's see how it goes. And uh, having said that, uh, I would like to directly go into the sermon uh, for this week, as uh, we are following. Uh, the RCL, uh, the topic that has been prepared or chosen for this week's meditation is the true wine. Jesus said, I am the true wine. I believe all of you heard this statement, am I right? And uh, so you must be having already in your minds, well, I already know what Praveen is going to say. <laughs> uh, do you know what am I going to say? <laughs> Many a times I, I used to sit in a crowd uh, and listen. When familiar scriptures come, we start thinking about those verses and we get all of our thoughts that we have in our mind. I, and we think, I don't think he can speak anything beyond this. So I know what he is going to speak. So what happens is when we study and discuss about the familiar things, most of the times we may miss out some small details through which God may want to communicate greater truths to us. So this is my request to the brethren. So as we study various familiar scriptures, so be more careful. Okay? If you are attentive to listen to the preacher for a new sermon or a new topic, that's great. And if you are listening to a familiar one, we should be even more careful. Otherwise, we may just, re just like read over. And I don't know how people say about we may hear over things, I guess. But we may hear, but we may truly not hear what God is trying to communicate to you. I'm not saying this as a correction to the congregation, but it is the same thing in my own life. As I read the scripture, when I come across the familiar scriptures, most of the times, I say, oh, I know this. I used to turn the pages very fast. But surprisingly, especially when I pre start preparing sermons for these uh, uh, familiar scriptures, then my heart goes into repentance and to understand, oh, God is, the word of God is so profound and uh, he can teach us even with his thought, even with a comma and even with a bullet stop. So the word of God is so powerful and profound. So let us, let us never underestimate it, especially with the familiar scriptures. Having said that, so the title of my message is, I am the true wine. And the focus of my message is, what does it mean for the church to live as the branches of Christ, the wine? What does it mean to the church that we are going to establish? And thanks to Livia for reading uh, the scripture portion in uh, such a beautiful manner. And uh, by her hearing her itself, we could get the picture and the analogy that Jesus was communicating to his disciples very Clearly, in the last week, last week we studied about an analogy or a picture that Jesus portrayed in 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 order to explain himself. What can you help me? What is that? What was the last week's message? Good shepherd, wonderful. Last week God spoke to us and we meditated on the word. What does it mean to say that God Jesus is the good shepherd? What does it mean to say that we are the we are his sheep and what does it mean to follow him, looking unto him and follow him. That's what we meditated last week. And this week, and uh, we, are, we are coming up with another uh, image which Jesus used uh, for himself. That is, I am the true wine. Okay? I am the true wine. The symbol of vineyard is not... Uh, any unique or something new for the Jewish people, it is very common in the Bible. We can find in uh, Isaiah chapter 5 or 17 and there are at least 10-12 analogies in the Old Testament, especially in the prophets, where God uses this analogy of wine and branches and the uh, bearing of fruit. Especially in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1 to 7, which is also called Song of the Vineyard. Here, God says, Israel, 
is his chosen uh, vineyard we he he specially chosen some seeds and planted uh, those seeds and he loved those vineyards so very much but unfortunately the vineyard was not bringing forth the sweet grapes but was bringing forth the wild grapes so god was so very disappointed with them so he uh, he cut the vineyard off and burned it off that was an analogy uh, we can get from the bible here the house of israel is the vineyard our uh, the people of judah are the vineyard and the lord of hosts the lord himself is the wine dresser and in zedmiah chapter 2 verse 21 a single verse that explains the entire old testament or this analogy of uh, wine and its branches of the vineyard vineyard and the uh, uh, wine dresser or husbandsmen uh, that is in zedmiah chapter 2 verse 21 where uh, zedmiah says yet i have planted you a noble wine a seed of high quality how then have you turned before me into degenerate plant of an alien wine? This is what God says about the children of Israel. So we can see that humanity was not able to bring forth the right fruit which it was supposed to bring. God has specially chosen the seed. God has uh, out of great love with passion he planted the garden but all entire humanity was bringing forth the sour grapes or the wild grapes. So that is where God was so disappointed. That is the story of entire Old Testament. So what we understand from the entire Old Testament is God's chosen vineyard which is humans, all humans uh, Israel has been used as metaphorically since God has chosen them, the name has been used in the uh, analogies and parables and the prophecies but God's chosen people are not capable of bringing forth the true grapes the sweet grapes they were supposed to bring forth but all of them were corrupt completely with inside and they are bringing the sour grapes people of god are wine which god tends and uh, and from which god expects good fruit they are expected to yield the proper fruit but they don't and they are destroyed that is old testament story god expects some fruits from his chosen people Having said that, in this passage, John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8, we can find that two times Jesus says, I am the wine. Here he is not saying he is the wine dresser, but he is saying, I am the wine. The first time he said was, I am the true wine. Okay? So, Jesus is identifying himself as the true wine. Doesn't it sound weird? Doesn't it sound weird? Jesus is the true wine. Is there any false wines? We have mango trees here. Can there be any false mango trees? Huh? He is using the word true wine. It is because he wanted to compare himself with something else be which, which came before. That is, though all that came before him are False wines, the same analogy Jesus used as he said about the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. If he is the good shepherd, whoever came before him are the bad shepherds. The same thing he explained in John chapter 10. Whoever came before me are thieves. Whoever came before me, they are wolves. They are not sheep. They are wolves in the sheep's clothing. Whoever came before me, they were destroying my my herd of sheep so the same analogy comes here Jesus is calling himself as the true wine which means all the previous wines are false wines what are those wines the answer is very simple entire humanity Jews Gentiles all together all are these false wines the analogy which was explained in Isaiah. So, in Isaiah, God was the wine dresser. He planted wines which are humans, all of us, and we brought sour fruit. So, what God decided, no, this is not the right thing. I'm going to plant another seed. That is the seed of David. 
and this seed of david is the true wine and who brought forth the sweet grapes the true grapes the right fruit so what is it talking about when jesus said i am the true wine it is talking about his vicarious life jesus as a true wine he bore fro fruit in on behalf of you and me you and i are always bringing the wild fruit israel failed completely god says i'm going to destroy them but he doesn't do that what he did he sent another wine and now the analogy changed a little bit now we are not the wine jesus is the wine and who are we we are the branches of the wine so can you see the continuation of the same analogy and but there are changes through which god is bringing forth a great change into this world that is the fruit god is expecting from humans is not possible in from any of us that is why g god sent his son jesus on behalf of all of us he is bearing fruit as a true wine that is the thing we can understand it is talking about incarnation okay ye uh, ye wine it is not in the wild it is not in the uh, jungle but this wine is something that is planted in the garden that is talking about incarnation jesus has been specially brought forth and planted in the human flesh and he brought forth a uh, fruit on behalf of all humanity so it's about vicarious humanity of jesus christ and then jesus said i am the wine and you are the branches it is a new metaphor he introduced all together and through this he is explaining the relationship between jesus and us so let's look into this again the scripture said i am the true wine and my father is the wine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away okay we'll spend a little time here okay this is very quite a disturbing picture to many of us oh we we believe uh, in the grace of god right and here it is written jesus is the wine and we are the branches and who whatever the branch that does not bear fruit it here it is written he takes away the immediately we read this word we think jesus is going to cut the branches off and throw in the fire but that is not jesus is trying to communicate here the greek word used here is aero oh, my pronunciation is not right but aero a i r o that is the word uh, john used as he as he was explaining about this taking away he said every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away if in your in your bibles when you have time uh, even when your phones also you can check Now, when you open Bible and read these words, there will be a footnote. Footnote. It explains the real word and its meaning. And in the footnote, you will understand it is lift up. Every branch that does not bear fruit, he is going to lift them up. He is not someone who is going to cut the branches and throw them in the fire directly. Of course, there is a part. Uh, a verse in the same patch passage about throwing into fire we'll come back to that a uh, little later but here in the beginning we understand one thing very clearly that whatever the branch that does not bear fruit he is going to lift them up so if any wine you see you know some of you might have known uh, the plants and uh, you know i i know in my hometown we used to have these uh, uh, bitter gourd uh, wines and some other kind of things any wine if it is on the uh, ground it won't be able to yield fruit because as the wine is going each and every point where it gets contacted to the ground there again roots come and the roots will be growing have you seen the vines as they're planted wherever it contacts the earth there again roots will be coming so when when more and more roots are coming what happens is what all the nutrition it is getting that has been supplied to the roots only to be developed that is the reason they won't be able to bring forth any fruit that's why what we do even tomato plants right have you seen tomato plants if you leave on the ground everywhere it contacts white color threads will be going inside the earth so where the entire energy nutrients are going into the earth back whatever the plant procured 
So what we are doing? We are putting, I don't know, supports. We put some sticks or support and we make them to crawl, crawl or climb onto the walls. When they grow, then we find more and more fruit. So what did we do? We lifted the plant up. We lifted the vine up, the branch up. So when the branch is lifted up, it will be able to bring forth the fruit. That is the word he used. And then he said, and every branch that bear fruit, he prunes. Pruning means we all know, slightly cutting down, cutting down certain things. Uh, here the vine, vine pruning is not uh, cutting down the branches actually. Vine pruning is like photosynthesis, we know very well. Photosynthesis is the <coughs> foundation and the, the base for entire growth of the plants and the fruit. We all know if you plant any plant in the shade, they won't give fruit. Why? They could not get the sunlight. When the, when the plants with the leaves, when they absorb the sunlight and oxygen, so carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, they will be able to bring for, I mean, produce more fruit and more energy. Okay. So, prunes, what it means is when grape vines are not bring i mean they are bearing fruit what these people do is many a time dust falls on the leaves so dust that disrupts or disturbs the photosynthesis so they clean those leaves so that the plant leaves may do their job the photosynthesis properly and bring forth more fruit that's where the greek word used here is kathairo the kathairo does not mean cutting off pruning pruning cutting off the word kathairo means purging. This is the same word used in, in term when it is talking about cleaning and all. So kathairo means purging, cleaning. Okay. So whatever the branch that bears fruit, he cleans it so that it may bear more fruit. Why am I saying, uh, Praveen, you are you're saying you are changing the words and the meanings and you are saying Greek words and why are you changing the meanings? Here it is written, take away, you are saying it is different, prune means cut, but you are saying it is not cutting, it is uh, cleaning. If uh, The very proof is this, read the text in its context. The next verse itself it says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. If the kathairo is not cleaning, how can the second next word make sense? Next word makes sense, you are already clean, makes, it makes sense only if the word prune means kathairo, which is cleaning. So when you take text in its proper context, we will be able to understand the meaning. It is not simply, Jesus is not simply talking a judgmental word, saying, I am the vine, you are the branches, if you are not bearing fruit, I am going to chop you off and burn you into, burn you in the fire. That's not Jesus is talking about. Even when Jesus said, uh, uh, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. That is the Greek word. This word has been used only in two places. One is this. The second place it's used was John chapter 1 verse 20, 29. Where Jesus said, I mean John said, looking at Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the same place, in the same analogy, John was using this word. So if... Jesus is the vine and we are the branches and if we are not bearing fruit he is going to lift us up and if we are bearing fruit what is he going to do he is going to prune us he is going to clean us so that we may bring forth more fruit this is not like the analogy in the Isaiah it is entirely substitution for the you know, song of a vineyard in Isaiah chapter 5 here Jesus he is taking it very seriously to bring forth fruit. He is destined. He is focused to bring more fruit. And even if you read in the same chapter, we find three words. Bearing fruit, more fruit, much fruit. So first he said, whatever the branch that does not bear fruit, he lifts, lifts, it, lifts it up so that it may bear fruit. And whatever bears fruit, he is going to purge and clean so that it may bear more fruit. And whatever bears more fruit and he is commanding and saying, Abide in me so that you may bear much fruit. Bear 
more much can you see the comparative degree in the language and how this change is going to take place that's what we are going to uh, study in the next so and again coming back to the same statement i am the vine and you are the branches what this simple word tells about the branches so the focus of my message as i said uh, it is uh, what does it mean for the church to live as the branches of christ the vine so what does it mean to call that we are the branches of this vine and it reveals three things number one thing is it reveals the image of community or church we are the branches we'll explain it anyway number two it reveals the non hierarchy hierarchical model of the church and number three it encourages equal focus on all individuals in the church without any discrimination or favoritism when jesus said i am the vine you are the branches the in this word these three points are included it is talking about the community it is talking about no hierarchy equality and it is talking about equal attention for everything every branch and everyone let's let's uh, read the first one it reveals about the image of the community or we, the church jesus said i am the one you are the branch no he didn't say that i am the vine you are the branches that's a plural he is not talking about individual to you and me he is talking it to for a congregation for the group of people he is talking having said that let me uh, uh, um, uh, let me show you this yeah jesus is the vine we are the branches you know each individuals we all are part of uh, uh, the vine and how the branches are in the vine you know how how do the branches look how do they appear that's what you can find in the right can you tell me from where this which branch is this top right the grape bunch is there no where which branch it belongs to <laughs> or can you tell me which branch branch this top any any one of these belong to ha huh? we cannot <laughs> we cannot tell not only for this even if we go home you could you take any wine you won't find it you won't be able to find where this particular branch started where is it coming from no there won't be all these branches are connected to one single wine that is jesus all the branches that comes in any wine um is uh, connected to the real wine okay uh, the the language is so funny if it is tree it is very easy to say trunk is there and then branches are there but when it comes to wine both are wine only <laughs> so it is a little difficult to communicate however so if we cannot find where one branch is connected with properly we cannot uh, distinguish in other words that's what i'm trying to say you cannot distinguish one particular branch here all branches are interconnected in a wine branches are almost completely indistinguishable from one another where one branch stops another branch starts where one branch stops another branch starts let me look at our own lives how did you come to the church how did you come to the church church belongs to christ how did you come here you know we all have come by by somebody we know they introduced the church to us right do we know them before no are those people are still there some may be there some may not be there some will not be there we all know that through us some other people have come and how did those people who brought us into the church came they came through someone else all of us we have come because of a chain reaction and because of one single vine the branches which came out of that vine are 12 branches the 12 disciples of jesus christ all of us are somewhere or other descendants of these 12 disciples from from one one person to another person 
I can tell I know the story how I came to this church it has a huge story it started I can say it started in 2008 from 2008 I have the roots that led me to this church all of us must be having similar story am I right how you came to the church so what happens is every branch here it is connected to the vine through another branch and where one branch ended another branch started that's what we are talking about the mr zakaria leadership is over from here another leadership is taking so where a branch is stopping another branch is taking it over so it similarly all of us are here because of other persons none of us are here by ourselves do you agree with me okay all of us are here because of god's work because of someone else so in the church each and every person is so very important and each and every person so no persons can be distinguished we cannot separate them we cannot you see them separately all of us are somewhere or other completely connected and all the vines they run together as they grow out of the central vine all these vines they grow together okay and there are no uh, independently standing individuals in the church community that's what this is talking about all are connected we are maybe sitting next to each other we may not be knowing anything happening that in our brother's family or what they are going through we may not be communicating to them uh, for the entire week sometimes entire month sometimes years we may take to communicate but we don't we, we may not know how, whether we are con connected to them or not many a times emotionally also we may not even feel but let me tell you in the church of christ jesus there are no independent individuals all are connected with one another we cannot separate them we cannot distinguish them we have to look at them as one body one vine and there are no independently standing individuals in the church but branches who encircle one another completely that's what we can see in the vine and in the church we are connected to each other and encircled around each other that is the reality of the church and we should be able to understand this is the picture of the church jesus is trying to communicate to us the vine metaphor challenges the western individualism and emphasizing social connection and uh, shared responsibility at, at its core we you know the world uh, you know i wonder my parents they come here every time they come uh, I'm, i'm i'm truly telling you i don't know my neighbors what their names and all i don't know what they do and all i don't know my father has more friends in my locality than i do my mother they know they know people around us i don't know you know we all are growing towards a life like this a western this western life like this where we don't have connection with our with people around us okay and this wine analogy it challenges such life and the most unfortunate thing you know what i don't know my neighbors most of my neighbors are not at least my brother, christians are not uh, they are entry so many of them are anti christian you know they are against christian faith uh, unfortunate thing is it is happening within the church you know we are calling it mega churches some most successful churches i don't want to take the name it's happening even in small churches also but that would be easy example that's why i'm taking it you know we say successful church there thousand people are coming 10000 people are coming 15000 people are coming and when the service is happening we don't know anyone even the person who is sitting next to us we don't even know that is the reality that is happening and people there are there are people who say oh i am going to church for god not for people oh excuse me that is not right if you come with such opinion with such attitude that is not christian at all probably you don't even know god why am i speaking such judgmental language i'll tell you <laughs> later i'll show you some verses as well okay if we say that we are coming to church for my me and god not for anything else not for anybody 
Oh, no, not at all. In Christian church, everybody are interconnected, interconnected with each other. We cannot escape from one another. We, God wants us to be together and together only we exist and together only we thrive. Together only we flourish and we bear fruit. That is what when Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches, mean. The vine and the branches metaphor exhorts the community to steadfastness in its relationship to Jesus. A steadfastness that is measured by the community's fruit. This tells us to be strong together in Christ. And, and the greatness of this community is known only by its fruits. To live as branches of the vine is to belong to this organized community and the unity where we all together share one faith and one life and one goal. That is what we are doing here. It can be clergy or it can be laity. It can be pastor or it can be a member. We are all together. Church cannot function. If only pastors are working, if church cannot function, if only leaders are working, church cannot function, if only ladies are working or only men are working, only children are working or only youth are working or elders are working. All of us have to come together, then only church would be able to bring forth its fruit and that is the purpose that God had for the church. The individual branch is subsumed into the communal work of bringing fruit. So, individual branch... <laughs> is already part of this group of vines, group of branches. There only it has its goal to bear fruit. Many a times we read this word, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches, and we consider individually ourselves. Okay, I am connected to Jesus. <coughs> it is about me and Jesus. If my works are good, if I am religious enough, if I am di disciplined enough, I am bearing the fruit. Oh no, that is not what Jesus is communicating here. It is not about individuals, it's about church together, bearing the fruit or not. And church is not a community built around individual accomplishment, choices or rights, but around the corporate accountability to the abiding presence of Jesus Christ. As a church, what is our fruit, what is our growth? It's not by the individual uh, accomplishment. We cannot say the greatness of the church because a couple of IAS officers are attending. We cannot say church is so great because all our members are educated. You know, there are a lot of churches who feel proud about it. Churches feel so great because all the members are rich. Or some people feel the spiritual thing. All the members are from uh, non-Christian background. So we are the most evangelical church here. We feel proud. No. That is not. It is not by any of the accomplishments of individuals. Church is not uh, uh, to be. It's, it's not a community built around the greatness of people's uh, cho the, the choices they made from our church all doc I went to a church in Karnul they were telling me you know what in our church there are at least 80 doctors and they are so proud of it it's good it's a good thing that educated community are there but that is not something that qualifies the church what qualifies the church is the fruit that the church is bringing forth and what is that fruit that we should be able to understand. Okay, we'll, we'll go to the fruit a little later. And uh, very fast, I'll co complete my two other points. It reveals the no non-hierarchical model of the church. If you look at this branch, there is not even one. Can you tell which branch is great here? Can you tell which branch is great? No. All branches are equal. There is no great, uh, so, uh, you know, great person ranks one, two, three and all. Like in the army, we don't have, we all are together. And that is the same example even our leader has set forth. You know, a 60 years old man washing washroom. That's the example he set forth. There is no big and small. All are equal. And fruitlessness is the only differentiation among the branches and the discernment of this fruitlessness uh, uh, fruitfulness is completely in the hands of God only as the church said 
the members can be seen differently only by the fruit they are bringing forth all the branches thus are the same before god distinguishable only by their fruit all are equal there is no difference there is only one standard in the community that measures the fruitfulness and that is the uh, that is to love as jesus loved us if there are any standards in the within the church to consider somebody he is connected to the vine that is this simple standard whether we are loving other person or not nothing else it is not by how much donation you are giving okay it is not by how much work you are doing in the church it is not by how greatly you can preach or you know the verses you are teaching here doing ministry here that and these no it is by how much you are able to love your brother as jesus loved us that is the only distinguishing factor that is the only qualifying factor for us to be the branch whether great uh, you know whether great or small ordained or lay person young or old male or female all are equally accountable to the one single standard that is loving the other members and it is the gardener's role to prune and shape and the wine to oh, and um, enhance the wine wine's fruitfulness you know as i said it is about how much we are loving our brother and let me tell you my brethren this is not something we'll be able to do by ourselves it is very difficult it is only the wine dresser who could do that he is the only one who can lift us he is the only one who can lift the barren branches to bear fruit he is the only one who can clean the fruit bearing branch to bear more fruit and he is the only person in whom we will be embraced and abide so that we may bear much fruit and next thing is the metaphor doesn't give importance to any single person and it give doesn't give attention or a uh, special focus on any one the visuals of this image we can see uh, the branches and these thing you can clearly tells that there is no special uh, attention given to any of these branches all the branches are given equal attention okay and in the church there are no partialities there are there is nobody showing special attention to one person and to the other person but as human sometimes we may fail or uh, we may choose some somebody or we may like but at the same but the reality is in the church of christ there is no possibility for that and by the spirit of god we all overcome we all together we overcome as a church you know there is sometimes sometimes we may think oh pastor is giving more attention to them not to us and those are the more important people or oh, now there is form a leadership team is formed for pastor focuses more on the leadership team and we are the bank back, back a few people so you know a pastor's attention is only on them no as human sometimes we may fail in presenting but in reality in the church of christ all are equal there is no special focus for anyone all are given equal importance and equal opportunities all are treated equally and uh, uh, nobody is treated different distinctly and uh, as a pastor as a me- member of leadership team we would like to confess it to you uh, you know even i take on behalf of pastor dan also i would like to tell these words to the congregation here we consider all of you are equal we don't give, show any special preference to anyone and uh, we respect each and every person equally starting from small child to the eldest person all of you are special to us and it we consider it as a honor to serve you i would like you church to be aware of it and believe it then only as a congregation we can be stronger together and can 
grow together and that's how you all promise me that you will help me to grow as a pastor that's how you all are also going to uh, help uh, as uh, pastors you know in this john's analogy there are no distinctions and all are given equal importance and another example we can see similar example that is paul apostle paul he gives an analogy of the body church is the body of christ and each and of each one one of each one of us are unique uh, organs he gives but at the end what he says all these organs work, work together for only one thing that is edification of the <laughs> church so in the distinction which is used by apostle paul it is for the edification of the church here equality is chosen is also for the edification of the church according to this metaphor it shows all are equal the mark of the fruitful community is its fruit and now i am coming to the last point the mark of the fruitful community is its fruit and you know what is that fruit love love is the fruit jesus said here i am the vine you are the branches and whoever does not bear fruit oh sorry abide in me then you will be able to bear much fruit and whoever does not abide in me will be cut off like a branch right here the fruit is jesus is not asking individual members only to bear fruit he is asking the church will grow and church will bear much fruit when it is together and the fruit is love what is the fruit of the spirit fruit of the spirit is love is it possible for one person to have this fruit can one person have love no love cannot exist with one person there should be more than one person for love to exist peace can peace exist with one person no there should be more than one person for peace to exist self control is it with only one person no it is all are related joy everything all the nine fruit you read in the book of galatians the fruit of the spirit uh, the primary one fruit love in nine folds okay but all this fruit is only one fruit that is love and this love is a community fruit it is not a fruit of a single person that is the reason i am telling you when jesus said i am the vine you are the branches and you should bear fruit he is not talking about your personal individual spiritual discipline you may be disciplined it is good it is important i am not against it it's very important for all of us but he is talking to a church for as a community together it is talking the fruit is about love and which one person cannot bear fruit my brethren let me tell you we as gci india here or GCI people here the, the church of christ church of jesus christ here all together we are 40 or 50 people here we cannot bear fruit by ourselves if you stay single to our individual if we live we cannot bear fruit when we all come together and work together then only we'll be able to bear the fruit because the very nature of this fruit is community community based the very nature of this fruit is relational that's why we all have to work together the fruit is a community fruit not an individual fruit and branches are called to bear this fruit fruit and you know what an interesting word here it is written bear fruit not produce fruit bear fruit not produce fruit you know what is producing fruit producing is something doing by ourselves we do something by ourselves and bring forth the product bearing is somebody does through us that's why we call fruit of the spirit whose fruit our fruit no fruit of the spirit is <coughs> the fruit which was brought forth by the spirit here jesus said bear, bear fruit not produce fruit because jesus knows it is he who is going to bring the fruit out of us but we should be abide abiding to jesus we should be connected to jesus then only we will be able to bring forth that fruit if you are not abiding in jesus we won't be able to bring forth the fruit it's a fruit it, let, let me tell you let me take the burden off your shoulders it is not the fruit you and me by, are going to produce it is jesus is going to produce this fruit and when we are together as a body of christ and abide in him as the branches 
of the wine all together then the fruit is going to come forth and that is a relational fruit then then only it will happen and uh, <coughs> fruit of the spirit is also fruit that is given by jesus and last point i will come and i would like to close and in this passage it is written abide in me abide in me abide in me i always struggle with this what does it mean to abide in jesus how can i abide in jesus i am reading my bible in the morning i am doing my personal prayers i am coming to the church i am giving the donation in the church or outside i am helping the people how can i abide in christ anybody had this question i suffered you know wow, what does it mean to abide in christ is it about the spiritual disciplines if we think we are mistaken <laughs> abiding in christ doesn't mean spiritual disciplines of course spiritual disciplines are important please don't misunderstand i am not saying to neglect spiritual disciplines okay what does it mean to say abide in christ the answer is very simple abiding in christ is not just about doing spiritual disciplines personally the answer we can find is from the scripture 1 john chapter 4 verse 20 where it says if someone says i love god and hates his brother he is a liar for he does not for he who does not love his brother or whom he has seen how can he love god whom he has not seen what he meant to say was simple if someone says i love god but i don't love my neighbor or brother that means he is a liar means if you abide with god it will be seen when you are loving your brother if you are not loving your brother that means you don't know god abiding in is next thing you don't even know god so how can we abide in jesus the answer is very simple we abide in jesus by completely coming giving ourselves vulnerable to our brethren in love abiding in jesus is not about praying 10 hours abiding in jesus is completely coming towards our brethren family members church members any other we know they may sometimes they may misuse us abuse us they may hurt us but out of love vulnerable we present our vulnerability and come before the other person and to love the other person that is the way we abide when the branches are coming together they are more closer to the vine when you know in marriage relationships they will tell triangular relationship you should be you are one angle your wife is another angle the third angle should be god how these two can come together when they go towards god they can come together so when these two are coming together uh, in a contrast when these two are coming together they are coming closer to god that means how can we come close to god when we come close to our brother in simple words how can we abide in jesus by loving our brethren and abiding in jesus in this it's a choice because it is you and me who choose whether we want to come close to our brother or not otherwise <laughs> i was just wondering the branch is already in the vine how can we say again abide it's crazy right if it is not there in the vine it's already been somewhere trash but he said you are already in the vine but abide he is asking how is it possible it is possible only in this manner when we come close to our brother and we are coming close to god so after this long sermon i know your minds are hot now it must seem i mean smoke must be coming and uh, yeah, i'm so sorry i took more time anyway in conclusion what i would like to tell you is this when jesus said i am the true vine he said jesus is the true vine who came to bear the fruit on our behalf now god is not expecting you to bring more fruit or any fruit it is jesus who stood uh, stood on our behalf vicariously he is bringing forth the fruit how is he going to bring forth the fruit as we said we have a vine dresser if any branch that is not bearing fruit he is going to lift 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 stop lifts it up and if any branch is bearing just fruit he is going to clean it purge it so that it may make it may more it may bear more fruit and and he challenges us and commands us to abide 
in him and as branches together we abide in him we bring forth much fruit jesus is the one who is going to produce that fruit and he makes the branches that do not bear fruit to bear fruit more fruit to much fruit and the branches can grow in the vine only with other branches only if other branches are not there these branches cannot grow as together branches together coming together only we'll be able to abide in jesus and we are going to bring forth the fruit may god bless you